Welcome to the Deepak Saini Show. Welcome back to the Deepak Saini Show. I want to thank J23 for our intro music. You can find a link to her music in the show description. My guest today is Stacy McAlpine. Stacy is a life transformation strategist and CEO of Journey Fuel. She's helped people and organizations achieve change for more than 20 years. I don't know if I believe that. You look pretty young. I'm not sure. 20 years? Come on. We'll get into that maybe. She's consulted some of the largest organizations in the world. Now at Journey Fuel, Stacy brings the power of proven corporate methods to individuals everywhere, helps people unleash their true potential so they can live lives they love waking up to. I love that. Stacy, welcome to the Deepak Sandy Show. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yes, I'm so glad we, uh, we got connected by uh, past podcast guests. Uh, so that's awesome. That's awesome. So Stacey, I always like to start off with, with, uh, you know, how you got to where you're at now, how you got into this business. Cause you know, most, you know, kids like, I want to be a fireman. I want to be a teacher. I want to what, whatever. Like nobody thinks like I'm going to be a transformation strategist. Uh, right. So how, so how did, how did you get to your point today? And, and feel free to go as far back as you want. Well, I was born on a dark night. <laughs> um, I was starting out my career in consulting. So I did project management, process improvement, strategic planning, change management uh, for big companies. So I worked for big four companies like Ernst & Young, PricewaterhouseCoopers, Bearing Point, which is now Deloitte, doing that kind of consulting. But what I was doing was using a methodology that was kind of a rinse and repeat for anything. So if it's project management, there are basic things you do to manage a project successfully, it's just a different scope. So whether it's implementing technology or standing up Psychological Health Traumatic Brain Injury Center of Excellence for the Department of Defense, <laughs> both of the things that I've done is, I don't know how to do either of those, but I know how to manage them. And I know how to elicit what the outcomes are that people are looking for and then help engineer the path to get there using different techniques. So I was doing that with big companies and then working long hours, 50, 60 hour weeks. You know, I had a stepdaughter, I had a daughter, I had another one on the way. My husband was in law school, uh, a bit tired, uh, the, carrying the weight of earning all the money while he was in law school, racking up the, the law school debt. So there's a lot of pressure. And as a big personal development nerd, you know, since seventh grade with the Covey Planner, I was reading all the stuff, you know, it's not like I didn't know what would be happier in my life. I just didn't know how to get it, to apply it to my life and actually live it, especially when you're in that super crazy overwhelm zone. Right. And I thought, well, if I can do things for my clients that are getting them to change, what if I started applying the things that they were doing to my own life and pretended I was a client? Because we tend to do things for other people more than we do ourselves. Right. <laughs> so. So, if I just and, pretend and not, I'm not, someone and else and not to stereotype, but women tend to do that even more. so. Than men, <laughs> it's not hard to do when you're a person that likes to help people, right? Or that you're getting paid to help other people. So you tend to go that route and put yourself on the back burner. And, um, but that takes its toll, as you know, being in the health space. And so I was just at a place where I started to treat myself as a client and apply those techniques and it started working. So I feel like that was a big missing piece in the personal development space, which is how do you go from knowing what to do or wanting to do something differently and actually activating it in your life when you're super overwhelmed and already have a million things to do and don't really know where to start. And that's what I do. And so I started to shift from helping big companies do that to changing the terminology so it's not boring taking out all the boring parts of goals and measures and right, right. strategy and turning it into maps and paths and destinations and and using the same techniques I'd use with my clients but transforming that into how to help individuals because it's the same result it's a formula basically it's how to get people to where they understand more of where it is that they actually want to be and then help elicit how to get there and structure a path to get there. So now as the CEO of Journey Fuel, I, I founded Journey Fuel in order to start to do that for people. So that's what got me to my path because it worked for me. I know how many people 
are in that position in the world. I mean, the personal development field, I think the last time I looked like $11 billion industry. So self-help, right? right? People are looking for help. And so I knew I wasn't alone. And I'm that person that likes to solution if it's something I fix that I know other people know that need that same fix. I like to help them apply whatever it is that I just found to work. So that's really what got me from consulting to where I'm at today. Got it. I love it. So how can people shift from a life of shoulds <laughs> to one that they truly love waking up to? So one of the biggest things, and this is what, you know, is at the heart of everything I do, and it's a, it's an awful acronym, but it's referred to as ADCAR in the change management space. Um, yeah, that, that is awful. Oh, it's okay. awful. Yeah. <laughs> it's A-D-K-A-R, which is awareness, desire, knowledge, ability, and reinforcement. And it's okay. linear. And that's the change management methodology for companies. So if there's a big change they want to make, there's a, a technical side of change. So what are the different steps that need to be taken to get the organization functioning and process stuff in place? And then there's the people that need to do stuff to make that change happen. So there's a people side. And the people side requires each individual to change, not, you know, with the 250,000 person company, it's the same for an individual because you need that individual to change. And so it's about how do you get people on board to want to change and then actually do it and then reinforce that behavior. So if you apply that same thing to our own lives, it's the same thing, right? And it all starts with the first A, which is awareness. So awareness is about all about what is the need for change, not just change for change sake, you know, oh, I want to be happy. Well, why do you want to, right. what is the need for that? Like, what is the actual need behind what are you going to do to get there? Well, you need to make certain changes. Well, what is the impact of that particular change? Why do I need to be doing something different? And it's kind of like anybody who's out there that, uh, you know, a boss was like, we're going to change the way that we do things today. Great. Another change. And they don't explain it. Well, here's why things aren't working. And here's what's going to happen if we don't change. And that's why it's important that we do this new thing. Totally different mindset. So if you're in an awareness state of really understanding, you know, what is the need for me to change versus staying the same? And Tony Robbins explains this really well, which is humans don't change for pleasure. They change to avoid pain. Right. So until you can get into a level of awareness of, how it's more painful to stay the same, that next piece, which is desire, isn't going to come. And so once you're in awareness of, okay, this is the change that needs to happen, then desire, you really need to saturate that desire piece before you get into knowledge and ability and reinforcement. Because if you don't want to do it, you're not going to do it. Right. You're just yeah, not. I, I, hey, I see that with my people, my own clients. You're too, not right? going to do yeah. it, and right? So, and I was, you know, very some. You said you use the word, well, why? That's why I always ask my my clients to like define their why or their mission or their purpose yeah. or whatever. That's the very first thing because otherwise you're right. Nothing well, will work exactly. backwards. Well, and you could want to look better. You could want to feel better. You could want to have a great business. But what is it that's underlying the need for that? Like, what is it if you don't? That's that awareness piece, right? Like, what if, why is it that you want that? What is the awareness level of what's driving that? Because you might not really want it. And if you don't really want it, you're not going to do it. And that's where the word should kind of comes in. I mean, right. I think this this is um, one of those things I say is like that uh, litmus test or trigger word where if you hear these words, you know, it's a should, you know, I have to do this. I need to do that. I've got to do this. I should do that. Why am I not doing this? Right. The, so those are all shoulds. Uh, that are not get tos, they're have tos, but according to who? Right. Yeah. And so, and you'll hear yourself say, I used to say it all the time. I used to catch myself saying it. And now my friends are, <laughs> I'm like the should police, you know, it's like, you don't, do you have to? You want to. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> but it's true. Cause as soon as you say, I have to go to the gym, well, do you have to go to the gym or do you want to go to the gym? And some people say, well, who wants to go to the gym? 
<laughs> I mean, you and I were just having this conversation in advance. Yeah. Well, what is it that change that you're trying to make? I want to be healthy. Why? Because I'll have more energy. I'll get to hang out with my grandkids. I'll get to, you know, not be in a chair and watch everyone else have fun when I can't even move around and do anything. So there's the why, then there's the what is required to get there and the desire to do that thing. Well, if your outcome is to be healthier and have more energy, the gym is not the only way. So if you keep in mind what it is that you do want, which is that energy, and you don't want to go to the gym, what else can you do to get energy? There are lots of different ways. And I was just talking to you about how I shifted from doing the gym treadmill workout and sweating, which is it's kind of nice to sweat sometimes, you know, or it just feels like you've gotten all these toxins out. So I'm not anti-sweating per se. But, I, I I don't mean to interrupt. I love sweating when I know there's a shower just around the corner. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. So there's you no know, therapeutic elements to the sweat, but in terms of having to do this or making myself do the treadmill or whatnot, um, I shifted more into number of steps per day. And it's interesting. I was talking to, it was actually, I think the woman who was cleaning my house. And I was talking to her about it. She's like, oh, I really want to get more steps in, but I don't have time. I'm always cleaning. And I said, no, 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 you don't have to do it all at one time. It's just accumulating it over the day. And so you can work it in to everything you're doing. And I'm not here to like pitch steps, but I do love them. I have to say, no, I can't now because I have a broken foot. <laughs> now I'm looking for another non-should to replace my steps, but it gamified it for me. Right. So now it's fun. Oh my gosh, I got to 2,500. That's awesome. Or, oh, I'm at 2,300. I'm going to get to 25 before I have ice cream. You know, so it makes it more fun. And now I want to do it. So the very long way of getting back to the original point is, well, one, you have to understand the need for the change and the thing that you're trying to get yourself to do this should. Is that a need? Like, do you need to do that? Yes or no? And if it's a need, oh, because a lot of times they'll say, oh, well, you know, I have to do that or I'm going to get fired. Well, do you have to or do you want a job that pays you well? <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, I want to do this. So there's a lot of ways to pull the thread, but ultimately it becomes where are the patterns, where are the themes, where are the things that, you know, if you always have to do a report that you'd rather poke your eye out and die. Is there another way to get the same result? Is it that that job is always going to want that? And whether you go to your boss and say, this is, I don't see the value in this or not. Maybe that's just not your job. Maybe you go do something else somewhere else, right? But it's information. So anytime you hear yourself should, have to, need to, I just encourage you to pause and think, okay, according to who do I need to, should, to, have to? Do I actually want to, and if I don't want to do this thing, what is the outcome that I do want? And what's another way to get the same outcome if I just really don't want to do this thing? And we have so many more choices than we really even think about because we're in that zone. If I have to do this, I have to do this. And you're like thinking about how much you hate it. The second you can, <laughs> wait a second, do I have to? And yeah, give I, yourself some liberties. I, I couldn't agree with more, Stacey. I, and I, I totally resonate with your story earlier about like their friends, like rolling their eyes when you're catching them on their, I do that <laughs> with my kids and my wife. You're like, I, right? I, 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 I need this. I'm like, do you need that? Or do you want that? And my kids <laughs> right. just, oh my God. Uh, and they just, and it stops the conversation. They don't talk about what they need anymore. <laughs> Cause they don't want to talk about it. It's helpful one, one in that way fun, too. Funny story. Um, you, you don't know about this about me, but I worked corporately for 20 plus years. I was a CPA, okay. C, CPA by first profession. So I totally, you know, no, no, <laughs> you know, exactly. <laughs> no, 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 the whole deal about that type of thing. I remember one role is like my third last role or something before I started coaching full time. There was just a report that we had to like provide to like senior management. I'm like, like I would never get a, a response or any questions. And I'm like, is anyone actually reading this? And, right? then, and then you go to, you know, president's office to get something else done or whatever and then you're like there's my report that i dropped off like three days ago and it hasn't like moved like i don't think and like okay. you know so what i actually did as a mini experiment i prepared the report but i didn't actually deliver it to anyone and nobody <laughs> cared 
nobody right? cared. And I'm like, and I didn't like doing that report because it's like, it's useless. Exactly. So well, and that's such it. a and great then after, like, example. Six, eight months, like it wasn't part of the thing anymore. <laughs> Love that. Such a great example. Well, I even used to have people that would work with me and I would say, I need this, or I would like you to do this. And they'd be on the side and be like, oh my God, this is the dumbest thing. I don't even know. It. And I used to tell people, I said, if you're in that space where if you're doing and you're thinking, I don't understand why on earth she's having me do this. Is it the dumbest thing ever? Ask me because maybe I don't know how hard it is to do. Yeah. You know, I don't know that it takes you three hours to go find out that statistic that I thought took you five seconds. You know, so it's back to what you were talking about, either realize do they even want this or even care? Is it just something that's been happening all the time and we all think we have to do it? But ask the question, ask the question. And you'd be shocked at how many times we're just in our own heads of yeah, having to do all these things, right? Absolutely. So what makes, you know, Journey Fuel different or differentiates yourself from other, you know, uh, personal development programs? Yeah, so so journey fuel. I I kind of gave the evolution of where it came from. I am in a place where I'm just over being bored, and so many people, and I myself included. I mean, how many times have you done a worksheet? How many times have you read a book and then stopped because now you have to fill out like an exercise? And you're like, oh no, I don't. I don't have time for that. I was just going to read the thing. <laughs> I don't want to like do anything. Um, but it's just like so much should in that space of even though you're trying to find something that you want to do better, it's so much just let's learn more stuff. Let's it's the K in ADCAR, right? You're doing now I'm learning, 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 but I haven't gotten to the A or the D. I'm just learning stuff. And the thing about being in knowledge, and it's not a bad thing to be asking questions. It's not a bad thing about going to get a coach, but understanding first before we even get to let me teach you stuff we start with a which is what is the experience of life that you want to have on the planet not what is the stuff what are your goals what is your vision what's your mission and that used to I used to get tight in my chest when people would ask me that I'm like if I freaking knew what I wanted thank you I would do that that's how I don't know you know one of the biggest things that changed the way I think and, and talk about paradigm shift, it was like that um, happened when I had my own coach. You know, so every coach needs a coach because we don't know what we don't know. Yeah, And we can I only agree. get so far if we're just doing the stuff that we know and isn't working, by the way. And so we get on ourselves because like, why can't I just do this? Well, because you don't know. The little tricks or you don't know any other way so we're not meant to do this by ourselves um and so um i was in a coaching situation and we were going through a rut which is a great exercise for anybody listening by the way it was awesome it's like think about something that is a pattern that you repeat over and over that is a bad pattern it's not serving you like okay so i want to be i want to be healthier but then I don't eat right. And then I go to bed. And then the next day I promise I'm going to work out. And then I don't work out. And then I say I want to get, you know, that whole cycle. So how do you break the rut? And in this situation, it was an exercise where you would go through where all the decision points are in that rut. So if we stick with this exercise example, right? Okay, so I've stated I want to be healthier. Then what's the first thing? Well, to decide what to eat. Okay, so now I have to decide what to eat. Do I eat healthy? Do I not eat healthy? Then what's the next decision? Well, depending on if I didn't eat healthy, which I probably didn't if I'm in my rut, the next one is, well, then I'm just going to work out. Okay, well, do you work out? Do you not work out? Right, you can go through all those decision points. If I didn't work out, oh, I promise I'm going to do it tomorrow. Okay, so then I go to sleep and I wake up and I do the whole thing. You know, that's just isn't right. a very high level example. But the the technique or the exercise was, go to each of those decision points and come up with three different things you could do in that exact decision point. So not this or that. Another Tony Robbins is it's, you don't have a choice until you have at least three options because one isn't a choice. Two is like an either or doesn't feel like a choice. And three, it's like, okay, now you're weighing options. Right, right. Now you're really thinking about what are the options. So I was doing this for um, a topic that we were working on around relationships, actually. And I was putting all these things and 
And I put, okay, so this decision point, I could do these three things, these three things, different things that you could do as options given that uh, choice point. And I was talking to the coach and I was like, well, I don't know if I have the right things, you know, like therapists, like, we're not going to tell you the right answer. <laughs> there is no wrong answer. Right. Um, but what she said was, and this is the whole pfft, was, well, how are you feeling in that moment? I'm like, well, I'm mad. And how do you want to feel? I want to, I don't want to be mad anymore. And she's like, no, how do you want to feel? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't want to be mad. Oh, well, I want to feel loved. Very different. So if you're going into so many of us, will just know how we don't want to feel. I know I don't want to be mad. I hate, I don't want this for dinner. I don't want that for dinner. I don't know what I do want, but I know I don't want Italian. And I know I, <laughs> there's no direction in that, right? If you know you want Chinese, now you have all kinds. Okay, well, there are these five different places. But if you know what you don't want, you're just going through all these things of what you don't want. So if you know what you do want, when you're thinking about feelings, you say, oh, if I want to feel loved versus I don't want to be mad anymore, the choice points that you come up with are very mm -hmm. different. Yeah, I can see that. So if you go back through those choice points and you start with, okay, how do I want to feel at this choice point? I want to feel empowered. Okay, what are three different things I can do to feel empowered? And then you do the should test. Do I want to do any of those? No. What are three other things that I could do to feel empowered that are moving you toward that outcome? Is it always three or could it be more than three? It's that you start with, you know, and that was this exercise. And I I like to start with three because when you go beyond that, your kind of head wants to explode, especially if you're a little bit overwhelmed. Yeah. So you kind of narrow it down and if that doesn't work. You come up with some more until you get to, I wouldn't hate doing that. That doesn't sound, okay, I can see myself wanting to do that. But so that concept just blew my mind because I mean, I certainly grew up in a household where it wasn't about how you wanted to feel. It was not, Stacy wants to be happy. Let's make her happy right now. It was, how do I not get yelled at today? Right? What do they need me to do so that I don't get yelled at? It wasn't, I want to feel this today. So it takes a lot of time, especially um, for those of us in a generation where wasn't about how do you want to feel today it takes some doing but what I start with with journey fuel in the beginning is instead of saying what do you want you know how are the things that you want in your life if you think about it life is a collection of feelings that's it yeah. it's not the car it's not the person it's not love it's not it's the feelings you get from those things so if you start with I want to feel energized, loved, happy, fulfilled, the feeling that you want. And then you go into, and I do different exercises of visioning of, okay, what does that look like? What are the things that are happening when you're feeling that way? And kind of go into visualization mode. So I won't get into the how, but the point being, you start with, how do you want to feel? And then you envision what's going to deliver that feeling. And then you go through and say, okay, so what seems to matter most to me? Then you start to create, well, what does matter most and create core seven that I call it, that are your seven core things that people call them values, but your core seven that matter most. And if you have those seven things, you have a regret-free life. If you're missing any one of them, there's that something's not right. So we find those seven things. And then those seven things are the litmus test for every single thing we do like from that. there on out. So it's basically taking, it's kind of flipping the script of what do you want to, what is the experience that you want to have in terms of feeling? And it just, I'm telling you, every person I've ever done this, is myself included, it changes the energy inside of you when you're starting to think about the possibilities because there's so many more that we just didn't even let in because we weren't even really thinking about. It's a oh, mindset shift, cool. right? A it is. Mind, yeah. And it then really I also, is. and also I think a bit of the language we talk with to ourselves as well is what I kind of picked up on earlier yep. too. Absolutely. So it's, and those are just a few things, but at the root of it, it's how do we 
live lives we love waking up to. And it's very different for every single person. I don't even start with the whole values wheel, you know, health, relationships, fine, because that's already defining something. What if you don't like your family? Not everybody likes their family, <laughs> you know, different things. But what happens is if you take away the preconceived preset thoughts and you're thinking about what is the feeling I want to have, things are going to come up. And you're going to start to see what does or doesn't really matter to you personally. And you're going to notice if there's a gap. Maybe you do like having your family in your life. It just isn't something that if you start with that, it doesn't feel like you do. So it's really fun to watch. And just fun is just such an understatement. The, the, The light that comes on in people's eyes when this clicks. And that's what I love what I do. Is my goal is to light up people's souls sounds a little woo woo but if all we do is turn the soul on inside of ourselves of being able to be who we're here to be and just do that energy within that person changes energy around everybody around that person changes and when we're happy we start to see more of the humanity in other people it's interesting it's like you stop judging as much as you do noticing the goodness in right other people it's so if I can light people's souls on fire the more I can do that with just the experience of life for everyone changes so I love what I I do yeah I love that too and I I totally believe that as well yeah I I, I always think it's like you know if I can work with my client the minimum the ripple effect is their immediate household and then it just goes out and out and if they have a team they run a company and they implement even just the smallest thing and entire their whole organization it's just it's it's just like dropping a rock in the water Ah. right type of thing so i love that i love that well you you know just one point on that is it goes the opposite way too you know if you have toxicity in your life yes absolutely yeah you know if you have toxic people in your life that ripple effect can just like like suck in, you know, like implodes. You don't even have an opportunity to really get to that space. So that's another part of the shoulds is, you know, thinking about who's in your circle and the impact and really thinking about what is the impact of that on you. And as a result, all the people around you. Yeah. You know, so it kind of goes, it goes both ways. If you think about it. Absolutely does. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, as we just kind of got to get to the last couple of questions here, uh, obviously I'm all about health and we've used a couple of health examples, whatever, and, but this is not a health podcast, but I do like to ask my guests, what is their, what does, what does your morning routine look like, Stacey? Okay. Well, I don't know if you ever heard of um, Julia Cameron. Are you uh, a Julia Cameron? No, she wrote The Artist's Way. Okay. Uh, it's a big book. Uh, if you Google it, it's kind of all over the place. So Julia Cameron wrote a book called The Artist's Way. And one of her things is it's all about, um, she starts her day with morning pages, which is three days of just the unconscious, you know, just writing. You're not supposed to think about what you're writing. You're not supposed to sound smart. You're not supposed to go back and read them. It's clearing out your brain. And I know that she's not the only one that does that, but she, in her methodology, it's all about, if you don't do that, you might as well not do the rest of any of the stuff that she does. Cause it's like, that's such a key part of clearing out your brain and opening yourself up to be able to take on the day (laughs) and even having space for anything else. It's a big part. So the morning pages, I do that every single morning. And by page two, I'm like, I'm so bored. I wish I had more coffee. I need, (laughs) but, and then by the end of the third page, I've had some epiphany or breakthrough or, or something. So she knows what she's talking about, about the three pages. So that I do regularly, even when I don't feel like it, it always changes my day. Um, I have kids, so it usually includes getting my kids out the door. But that morning pages thing beyond anything is such a great way to just get your mind clear and then start the rest of your day. It is it's a huge one for my morning yeah. routine for sure. I, 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 a lot of people, a lot of guests have you said something similar to that, or and and or morning pages. I remember, and I'm a huge proponent of journaling. And yeah, I like to say with many things is like the best time to do it is whenever you will do it, and if that's in the evening or the right. afternoon or the morning, whatever, it's all good. Right, it's all good. So, Stacy, um, could be health related, could be something business related, or in your business, or or whatever actually. But what 
do you wish you would have started earlier or what would you have loved to tell your younger self? Oh, Lord. <laughs> well, okay, well, okay, we'll limit it to one thing. We'll limit it to one thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I could tell my younger self. I think um, it's really that should thing that we started with in the beginning is really thinking about according to who, you know, you should according to who and who, what are those people's lives like that are telling you that? And I know this is not like a Stacey McAlpine-ism that came out of just my brain. I mean, this has been said over and over, you know, um, like listen to who, who's saying what they're saying before you start doing what they're saying. But it's like, I mean, how many people are miserable telling you to do the things that you're not doing that they think you should be doing? Do you want to have that life? You know, a friend of mine um, is going through a, a situation where she's not happy in her marriage, but she's so afraid of other people and what they would say about her if she were to get divorced. I'm like, do those people live in your day all day? <laughs> you know, does does Antoine down the street like really know what it's like to be in your house every single day listening to what you're listening to and they're telling you not to leave? So, you know, putting into context, if whatever people have their opinions of what you should or shouldn't do, everybody is so different. We're so different. Even if nobody else does the thing that we think is good for us. Nobody else is like us anyway. So right. it would make perfect sense that we would do something that someone else might not do or vice versa, right? So I think the biggest thing would be just to keep that should test. And it's a logic test, really. Because when you're a kid and you have a parent and you, you only have so much freedom, right? But we're don't, we don't anymore. We don't have that anymore. We have choice. Even if we're married, you know, even if we have kids, we have a lot more control than we really give ourselves the liberty to use. And it's usually because we're just living in this. Yeah, you know, I like to think right. of it like a snow globe. You just go, oh, my God, like all that snow in your head. You just end up. And let That's it a good settle. Analogy. That's a good analogy. I like that. You know, let the snow settle. And there's so much peace in just. All right. Wait a second. <laughs> Let me think about this for like two seconds. Is that really worth me listening to? And just getting used to being uncomfortable of feeling like, oh my gosh, well, what are they going to think? Who cares? I mean, really, that's what I love about being in my 40s. <laughs> like you kind of just stop giving a shit or I guess I shouldn't say that. You know, I sh you stop caring as much or right. recognizing, you start recognizing how unimportant so much of the stuff we thought was so important really is i guess it's a better way of putting it yeah. in a more positive spin yeah i love that i love that now uh stacy you you do have a, a gift for the listeners could you uh briefly explain uh what that gift is yeah so i'm super excited it's a a book that i'm just finishing right now so by the time this goes on air um I'm, i know it'll be available it's called uh success without sacrifice and it's a 14 day book that guides you through a little step you can take each day that'll help to bring more of what you want in your life and less of what you don't. And um, I'm really excited about it. It goes back to says who life has to be miserable says who, you know, there is a way to have more joy in life and the success that you want without giving up one for the other. And that's what that book's all about is helping you get emotion. So, um, uh, that is a gift to your listeners that um, you can get at journeyfuel.com awesome. and you'll be able to see it there. Awesome. And we'll have all of Stacy's uh, the link for the website and all her socials and how you can contact yeah. her, et cetera, all in the show, show notes there, okay, perfect. Uh, everyone. So uh, is there one uh, last uh, golden nugget word of wisdom you'd like to leave the audience with before we uh, wrap up today? I would say, um, you know, well, I'll try to say this super fast is one of the things that made me sad that I really started to think about is what if I don't live life as who I'm here to be and never experience me? You know, if you really stop and think about if you don't just be you, you will never know what it's like to be you. 
So to think about how sad that would be if we just live under all these other shoulds and all these other things and like what you're really sacrificing is knowing who you are for your own self and really being able to know, gee, I wonder what I would do today if I wasn't doing that should or what's going to come up for me if I just actually lived my life choosing things in ways that made me want to, that desire, you know, getting right, right. rid of all those shoulds. And that the easiest, simplest way to start is just one should at a time, right? So, um, you know, to think about the impact of not taking care of those things for yourself, of continuing to do all those shoulds is that you don't ever really get to be you. And regardless of what other people think or what they experience of you, you don't get to know what it's like to be you. It's kind of a trip if you really go there and really feel the deepness of that yeah i was just gonna say that is pretty profound so I, I i challenge the audience like have that thought with yourself yeah where is there opportunity perhaps yeah so. one should at a time and it doesn't have to be you just stop listening to everyone <laughs> little baby shoulds little baby shoulds and and it'll just start to pop up more and more ways for you to come out of your i love show. it i love it Stacey, I want to thank you uh, again for uh, graciously being a guest on on the show. And uh, it's, been, it's been a blast talking to you. And we, ha we got a chance to talk a little bit beforehand as well. So uh, I really uh, appreciate that. So again, thank you for being on the show. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Awesome. Everyone, we're going to throw it back to J23. He's going to play us out with some music. Don't forget also to check out today's sponsor of the show. Again, everyone, thanks again for listening to the Deepak Sandy Show. Exceptional results for the exceptional you. Till next time. This episode is brought to you by Bioptimizers Mass Zymes. This is digestive enzymes that helps you break down your protein, fats, starches, and sugars. I've been using this product for, gosh, over a year now, specifically in a protein-heavy meal, because I really want to break down my protein to make sure I get the amino acids that I need for muscle maintaining muscle growth, uh, maintaining lean muscle mass, super important as we age uh, and all stages of life, really. So again, huge proponent of mass times. Check out the link uh, below to see how you can get at least 10% off, if not more. Cheers. Podcast produced by the Minted Green Company 